Yeah, Mike's homeschooled and um, Beverly is ostracised from society because it's rumours that she's sexually promiscuous. So they're much more relevant relevant um, themes for why the losers are in the losers club. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, Favourite scene for you? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, we've done, again, as Silver mentioned, we've done this video four times and each time I've been like, I don't know what my favourite scene is, but... I think for me, from from a, a, a film nerd perspective, my favourite scene was when Beverly has her vision of it, where her hair gets sucked, uh, the hair comes out of the plug hole and starts trying to suck it out, and then there's blood everywhere. Yeah. And I kind of liked it. It was really over the top, way more graphic than the 1990s miniseries version of it. Like every and wall, the book. every wall gets covered in blood. There's like this fountain comes out, but like from a from a VFX perspective, it's all mostly physical effects, not a lot of CGI going on there. And I thought it was just great. But it had, for me, it sort of it felt like it sort of felt like a nice nod to Nightmare on Elm Street scene where Johnny Depp gets exploded all over <laughs> the ceiling. I remember seeing that for the first time, being like, "Oh, that is." That is absolutely brilliant, you know, so I thought this one was sort of like that, but more, you know, yeah. I thought it was very good. And also the scene, again, where Eddie throws his medicine at his mum, I really like that, because yeah. <laughs> he throws, um, but uh, from a narrative, from an actual plot perspective, I thought um, the kind of first confrontation with Pennywise was probably my favourite set piece, where the Losers Club first fight him together. Um, in New, in New Street. Street, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought that was very good. Um, from a narrative perspective, but also from an effects perspective, I thought that was really yeah. well done. Yeah, uh, mine would have been the New Bolt Street scene, um, especially once they start isolating, once he starts isolating. I mean, Richie's one, um, again, we like the bevy scene, that Richie's one in the room full of clowns with the with the Tim Curry Pennywise. Yeah, just a little nice bevy. Like, oh. There are probably, <laughs> there's several Easter eggs that you could go into in this movie in touch to, you know, Stephen King's works and the original miniseries mm-hmm. and things like that. Like the turtle as well is in there. The turtle gets referenced a couple of times, but there we go. Um, that's, the turtle. that's a whole other video. On what okay, never mind. Like. <laughs> but, yeah, it, t- it ties in with um, the other, which is a Dark Tower character, and it ties in with like other stuff in the Dark Tower. It's, it's part of Stephen King. Well, it's the original star, probably, of the multiverse creation. But Basically, the turtle is this giant extra-dimensional being who vomited up the entire universe whole one time because he had stomach acid reflux. Oh, okay. That's very, what the turtle uh, is. Very Terry Fetchers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my favourite scene would have been on New Vault Street, especially the Richie scene with the clowns, even though it was ridiculously over the top. Um, when Pennywise comes out of the fridge and unfolds himself and then he goes, Time to vote! Um, yeah. Uh, not scary at all. Open the door. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's just so over the top, clown house goofy that it was, it was, and it was, but it was very well done. And also, upon a second viewing, because I have seen this twice, uh, the projector scene mm, when it comes out, very when good. it comes out of the when it comes out of the projector, which to be fair, you should be expecting, but when it comes out of the projector, I went shit. There's a few ser- like decent jump scares in this one, where where Pennywise comes out of the the projector screen is amazing, but also when. Uh, ben has his vision of the headless boy with the Easter eggs in, in the library, and then the because the lights are flickering, you know it's jittery, jittery, like he, uh, headless boy, and then it's Pennywise when the lights come back on. It's like, oh my god! <laughs> it's, it's, it's very well done. And so. supposing as we both mentioned Pennywise in the space of the last minute. We should probably get to talking about him. The man himself, which is probably what most of you have sat through half an hour or something of this video to see what our opinions of. Um, Go ahead. Um, I don't think anyone can ever compare to Tim Curry. It's just not possible. Do you know, I have a very soft spot and Simon has a very hard spot for Tim Curry. And this film didn't even try. It just went, did something completely different. They, they were just like, you know what, there's no point in even trying to outdo Tim Curry's Pennywise. So we're just going to go in a completely different direction. And it worked really well. When I when Silverbolt told me that it was going to be Bill Skarsgård who played um, Pennywise, I was I was a little bit skeptical because he's he's quite a young actor. He's only about my age, and I I wondered would that kind of muddy the waters a little bit of adult versus children because like he's quite a young adult. But when he was all made up and all creepy cl- clown, it 
you know, you wouldn't have noticed that he was a, a young actor, do you know? So I thought he did a very solid performance. Again, didn't even try to outdo Tim Curry, just did his own thing, owned it in his own way, and just went, went for it, which I thought was, was very good. And his, oh yes, his squinty eyes, I thought was, was very clever. When you first see him in the culvert, he has eyes that are slightly off, and it's really creepy. It's kind of just unsettling. You can't really see it very well here. No. But yeah, it's, it's just sort of, it's something that's slightly wrong. It's like Brad Pitt in 12 Monkeys. He's got those eyes that are slightly off, which makes him seem a little bit unhinged and slightly weird, do you know? So I thought, I thought it worked very well. Um, <clears throat> the only issue I had with Pennywise is that he fell ever so slightly into sort of the CGI horror monster trope that we're seeing a lot in horror films at the moment. This kind of unnaturally moving, um, slightly kind of insectoid kind of movement, um, which again makes him creepy, scary and unattractive to children. You know, so for me, the idea of him being a clown is that he lures children because he's a clown and he's got balloons, yay! But in this, he's, he's a monstrous clown. So that, to me, doesn't make sense when it comes to luring children. So that's the only issue, really, that I, I had with the character. Um, because I've been a fan of Stephen King's It for a long time, and because I've been part of forums that talk about Stephen King's It and Facebook groups about the new movie, I know somewhat of the production hell that this movie's gone to. You know, they've rewritten <laughs> the script, they've got... They've hired producers, then got rid of them. They've hired directors who then quit because they the, the studio wouldn't let them do it the way they wanted mm -hmm. to do it. Um, this movie's gone through production hell, and it's gone through numerous castings for Pennywise. The one that was before Bill Skarsgård was um, William Coulter, who uh, really? the, yeah, he was the one that was going. He was the one that was okay. cast before Bill, and I think he dropped out due to um, time constraints. I wonder what that would have looked like. I don't know what that would have looked like. <laughs> but obviously, being such a fan, and because Pennywise is the most iconic clown, probably as, even even going with Ronald McDonald, he's probably one of the most <laughs> iconic clowns ever going to Although for very find. different reasons. For very different reasons. Despite the fact that Ronald McDonald has killed more children than Pennywise has. Um, yeah, that's kind of bleak. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, this was obviously the major talking point about the film in general was who was going to play Pennywise and how were they going to do it and everybody basically was going no one's going to top Tim Curry and I love the fact they didn't even try <laughs> you know they did not do the the jolly child attractive clown yeah because all you're going to get is everyone comparing to Tim Curry and the, the re and the reason I still like I did really enjoyed Bill is because he is a monster trying to be a clown he doesn't quite get it right, so he's drooling and he's got a slight speech impediment. He's got buck teeth and the eyes are biffy and he, you know, he, he moves as something not quite human. And as far as I'm concerned, Bill Sc Skarsgård's performance knocks it out of the fucking it park. Was he was brilliant. He was very, he, very good. And I think, as you said, it works because he's not trying to outdo Tim Curry. He takes it in a completely different direction mm -hmm. and it works. It's brilliant. It's... It's, it's fantastic. So, and I'm waiting for a Pennywise versus Pennywise comparison video. Someone's uh, going to bring it. If it's, not, if it's not Looper, it's going to be Doug Walker. If it's not Doug Walker, it's going Someone's to be Mott Mojo. Or Decker. or Decker might do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So somewhat Decker, if you're watching, hint, hint, wink, wink. Yeah. Um, do it, Decker. Do it, Decker. Do it. <laughs> you were creepy. But there we go. Uh, so, yeah, he knocks it out of the park. He was fantastic. I loved it. And I really like the slightly... There's the not quite human aspect to it. But what you just said there about him, a monster, pretending to be a clown, more so than a clown with a monstrous interior, I think, I've never actually thought of it like that until now, so I think oh, it's, right. it's, it's, it kind of has recontextualised it for me, so yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I suppose, yeah, that makes sense. Um, the only part which naturally segues into what we talk about as well is the CGI. Uh, the, the thing that stood out for me that I didn't like was the leper. The leper could have been practical. When I saw that, I actually went to the bathroom for that scene, so I have zero idea of what that looked like. You see <laughs> it vaguely again, I think. Yeah, you see it in the sewers. In the sewers, yeah. yeah. Um, I think there was an over-reliance on CGI monsters, and that That's is very much a, a common moment. cinema thing at the moment. And to me, and, and maybe it's just because I'm old school and I grew up on things like Star Wars, which was all practical effects... CGI and an over-reliance CGI when it's when it's used as the effect rather than to enhance an already good practical effect, uh, like take Dunkirk, the practical effects in that are very mm, good. Mm, um, mm -hmm. 
it to me it pulls the immersion out. It 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 pulls you out of the experience. It just makes you go, well, that looks fake as shit. Especially yeah. when it's on a fucking forty-five by twenty-five screen in the and it's the scene is shot in the middle of the day, as in the leper makes yeah. no sense. Oh, one thing I'll mention again: Pennywise does this whole. I'm going to scare the shit out of you, but not actually try and kill you because I don't know why, because it's not quite the right time, even though I've got... <laughs> plot armor! Yeah, plot armor saves you! <laughs> uh, in very much in the case of Eddie on the new Bolt scene. Very, not as bad as in the miniseries, where he just goes, I've got you, now I'm going to let you go, because I want to talk about floating. <laughs> floating! I love the fact that it was literal. Yeah, yeah. I love the fact the that it was literal. Yeah. Um, you know, time to float. I love that line. Time to float. Um, and they're actually floating. Yeah. I thought that was... Brilliant. Again, I don't know if that's a thing that happens in the book. No, but it's not. Floating around but like it, it, it does have this creatures. huge cavern thing, but it's not made up of old spare parts in the standpipe. It's, mm-hmm. it's quite deep under the earth. Um, but to go back to the CGI, I think CGI wrecks film immersion when it's not well done. Like if you had, if like two thirds of this film's budget had been put into the CGI and it was pretty much photo real. I wouldn't have had an issue with it. And also, if they had stylized all of the live-action stuff to be a little bit more painterly, so that the CGI stuff didn't feel as fake. So, like, you know, that's, that's one of Zack Snyder's favourite things to do, where he sort of makes all the live-action stuff so stylized that you don't notice the it's CGI, CGI stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, like, with 300, Watchmen, Sucker Punch to an extent, you know, this kind of overly, overly stylized live-action stuff means that the CGI is kind of seamless. Whereas this, the CGI just was a little bit too um, flat. It was a bit too flat. It's more like moving paintings than it was like yeah. actual physical things. And yeah. it, it kind of pulled it. it. Pulled it back slightly. Yeah, it just that was that was one of the things that ruined this. And I think <sighs> we live in a world at the moment in cinema where we rely massively on computers, and practical effects have kind of gone out the window. And that's one of my bugbears as well because. I think a CGI should be a last resort on everything. Yeah. You know, it should if you if you've tried doing it practically, if you've tried doing it through green screen or blue screen and it doesn't work, then you go for CGI. Because at the moment CGI is cheap, it's cheerful, you can knock it out a lot quicker than you would have, let's say, in Peter Jackson's time when he was doing Lord of the Rings, when that was like really complicated stuff. Nowadays it's much more simple and I think people have they're getting lazy in VFX because we have so much CGI. So that, that's my little, that's my little soapbox moment for CGI. Um, uh, um, yeah, my the the thing that I I will say I didn't like about it was, and it's not a mistake just due to this film particularly because The Conjuring makes the same mistake and Insidious makes the same oh, yeah. mistake, is when the final confrontation in the third act is overshadowed by the confrontation in the second act. Mm. The house and the scene on New Bolt Street was brilliant. Mm. I, I, I love that in the entire sequence from beginning to end the consequence in the third one the, the, car, the final conversation in the third one it didn't have the same punch because at this point the audience has reached saturation point and it's just like yeah 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 we know it's they're going to win monster. we know they're going to win yeah. you know you don't make a film anymore where the bad guy loses because that would be something fucking different and god forbid Hollywood wins, surely yeah so, sorry, sorry yeah, yeah. You, know, you know and god forbid the cinema these days Make something fucking different. Yeah, okay. that's that's a video for another time where I rant about lack of originality in film. We're yeah. not going to even touch that today. But um, I, oh Jesus, what was I going to say? What, what did he just say? Uh, about how oh, the, the second yeah. the second act is overshadowed. This third happened actor, in yeah. this happened in the Purge as well, where you had like this amazing you know uh, second um, inciting incident. You haven't? Have you seen yes. Purge? Like it, the second inciting incident in the film is is fantastic, you know. So it's like it makes perfect sense. But then the third act is utterly useless. It sort of fizzles out, you know. Nothing really happens. Conjuring does it, especially the Conjuring Two. Was that one that we watched in your sister's house? Yeah. Uh, like you know the the, the was second. Was Insidious Two? I can't yeah, remember. I think it's Conjuring. It had Patrick Wilson in it, so that was the Conjuring. Oh, that was Conjuring. Um, <laughs> but like again, second inciting incident, end of the second act, fantastic. Then the, the third act just goes flat, and this again kind of suffered from that. Really, we had, yeah. you know, if you made this, if you've made the new bolt confrontation, just pulled it back ever so slightly, made it a little bit less, maybe just shortened it, and then introduced a lot of those creepy things that happened into the final confrontation, 
would have made it a lot more yeah. spectacular. Because you just end up from I, I find that I end up with horror fatigue when I watch these films. Yeah. You know, it's just too much weirdy stuff happens. And yeah. it's by the end of it, you're like, yes, get on with get it. Get on with it. Yes, you're beating up the clown. Skip with a bit, bars. brother. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, it, it, uh, yeah, it, it does fall flat. No, you got the last scene where, you know, Bill is being held by the throat by Pennywise, and Pennywise is bargaining with the losers. Now, one of the things you've got to understand about the creature of it is that it's incredibly arrogant. It doesn't pause two seconds. Arrogant. Think of arrogance. <laughs> yeah. Should be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's incredibly arrogant. Yeah. One of the things about the Pennywise creature is that it is incredibly arrogant. And it's so it doesn't understand, it doesn't know how humans think, so it thinks it can always win. This one, it starts arguing with them. And it starts pleading with them. And I and that, I suppose, that is an understandable point of view. And then you've got Richie going, oh, you've punched me. You've dragged me into the sewers. And now I've got to kill this fucking clown. It's like, what's with the false tension? We know you're going to help him. You're not going to leave your mate to die. So it's this false tension. And then you've got, now, the bit where they're all wailing on him is very good. And, of course, it's pure symbolism. It's very symbolic in that they're beating down their fears. Literally, and so Pennywise can't kill them, which makes no sense because it's a physical creature. So, but uh, da, 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 da. He, he, he weakens himself very much in the final confrontation. Uh, you know, Silphop saying he goes from being this really terrifying villain to all of a sudden being quite ineffective. You know, because, and I feel that sort of that weakens the final confrontation. Mm. Do you know? Yeah, I mean, I didn't mind the fact that that, that once because just because they're afraid of it doesn't mean they can't kill it. He can't kill them. Mm. You know, he can kill them. They don't have to be afraid. It feeds on fear. Well, it feeds on emotion. And what it feeds on is another video entirely. Um, um, but it doesn't, they don't, it doesn't need, they don't need to be afraid for it to kill them. They don't need to be. It's a physical creature. Kind of, coulda, woulda, shoulda, again, another video for what it actually is. And we're currently running at 48.25 minutes, so we're going to have to wrap this up. Uh, you just, well, anything, but never mind. It, uh, I didn't like the fact that it can't kill them because they're not afraid. That makes no sense. Mm. Of course it can kill them. But because the new vault scene was very good, the reason why I really didn't like the, over the, the third act was because it was too badly overshadowed. I think the pleading is understandable from a certain point of view the more I think about it. You know, the fact that it offers them their lives in exchange for Bill. Yeah, because they've made it so afraid. I just don't understand... But it's fed by the presumption that the creature can't kill them because they're not afraid. Yeah. That makes no sense. Mm. Just because it can't feed up them doesn't mean it can't kill them. You know? So that, and to me, that was where the final confrontation fell a bit flat because it was overshadowed too much by the new ball scene. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest gripe. Yeah. Well, is that is that everything? Is that all of our ramblings about this particular? My film? final thoughts is roll on the DVD because I'll be buying it. <laughs> I'm watching it. I'm watching it. I, I want to I want to see um, the next bit, but uh, again, as is a troubling uh, fashion in Hollywood at the moment, we're not going to get it for another two, two years. years. Yeah. So they love dragging shit out, don't they? Well, the fact they haven't even started they haven't even started casting the adults yet. Now, me personally, I would like to see the likes of Brandon Crane um, or Emily Perkins come back. Mm. Because they are now, they're the children, they're, that's the child actors they played. I think it was Ben, and it was definitely Beverly in the 1990 miniseries who played their child actors. Who would now be about the right age to do this? I think that would be... Would they look like the characters in this film, though? Uh, well, William, uh, you know... Um, Billy, whatever the feck his name was, I can't think of anyone. Seth Green and I can't remember who played Ben. Um, Brandon Crane and John Ritter, Ben and Ben, they didn't look anything like other. Well, yeah, Ben doesn't matter because he slims down. He gets he gets skinny. Um, but I don't know. I don't know how you're gonna be able to cast them to make them look like each other. Yeah. But we'll find out. We'll find we'll out. We'll find out. Yeah. Let's 2019. I genuinely have to say, I'm genuinely looking forward to it. We're coming so. up to the twenties, Simon. We're coming up to the twenties. Yes, yeah. we are. Oh, let's just call you Simon. Silver Bob. We're going to the 20 Silver Bob. <laughs> but I have nothing further to add. Do you have anything to add? I don't. No, no. I think that's everything. I think we've covered all of that. Notes. See these lovely notes that I made Silver Bob write. I made him do it. Don't need notes. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, thanks for watching, guys. 
I, I have nothing else, so I suppose we should just wrap this up. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. All right, guys. Uh, thank you to my co-host for joining me on this little video. And uh, I'll simply say adios, au revoir, and leave. Bye-bye. And now I need to teach.